At the release of the Valorant closed beta, we were greeted by a new agent, Race. Since her release, a lot of players are deeming her to be overpowered and way too strong compared to other agents. In this video, we're going to take a look at the perception of new agents in games and compare it to a situation in League of Legends and Overwatch, while we try to answer the question, is Race actually overpowered or is she not that bad as we think? If you liked the video or learned something from it, a like and a sub would be greatly appreciated. Let's take a look at Race, the demolition expert of Valorant. Only a few days after Ray's her release, players have flocked to Twitter and other social media saying that she is insanely strong and more importantly doesn't fit in with the other Valorant agents. Where the other agents have abilities that give small advantages and need to be used in a smart way to create these small advantages, Ray's has abilities that deal raw damage. This doesn't really fit what Riot Games has said before since they communicated that abilities in Valorant are not supposed to obliterate enemy teams but only be there to create advantages for teams. Race has 4 abilities that are able to deal damage, with her signature abilities, the grenades, the C4 packs which mostly used to get Race into high ground positions, the little boombot which is used to scout areas and her ultimate with which she can fire a rocket and kill an entire enemy team at once. Two of these abilities don't fit Valorant up till now, the rocket launcher and the grenades. These two abilities can kill an enemy without being in line of sight with your opponent. This is what makes them feel a bit unfair and feel like there is no counterplay to them. With other agents, the weapons remain the most important part to kill an enemy, while Raze has two abilities that are able to one-shot you. This is the picture painted at this point and what makes people afraid to play against her, especially on the new map Split, which is rich with a lot of small corridors the attackers need to push through in order to get to the bomb sites. This is an ideal playing field for Razer abilities and makes it even harder for players to push. This all brings up the question though, is Raze overpowered? Do we need her abilities to be toned down a bit or maybe changed overall? Or are we simply not experienced enough to play against her? To answer this question, we want to take a look at two other situations in different games. First up, let's take a look at League of Legends, the other game from Riot Games. League of Legends now has more than 120 champions that all differ in skill level and perception of strength. New players will find it really hard to play against a Tryndamere for example. A champion that will be very strong in lower elos since these players don't know how to play against him. In higher elos, where players are more experienced and learn how to play against him, the champion isn't even considered being picked by the top players. If you look at League of Legends, the champions that are being picked and banned in low elos are way different than the champions in high elos. This comparison is of course not one-on-one -on -one comparable to Valorant since we have way less champions and to be fair, Raze's abilities aren't really hard to use, but it does explain Riot Games' philosophy on Raze. Morello, agent developer for Valorant, had the following to say on Reddit. Initially, while everyone is getting used to the game, these will score quite a few kills. But the goal, and what we've seen in other testing so far, is that this turns into rarely getting kills with the abilities as players respond to the tools and into flushing players out of areas and gunning them down in disadvantageous gunfights. As the skill curve goes up, people shoot Gary more, they dodge clusters most of the time and rush her when she throws a close range satchel pack with her weapon down, and the real impact becomes space control. The high damage is more to threaten you than kill you, forcing you to move positions into disadvantageous engagements. For the small space it controls compared to something like Sova's dart, Breach's flashpoint or Phoenix's curveball, we had to make it impossible to ignore so she could flush out predictable positions. These abilities should still be used before or after engagements to control space, not used instead of guns in direct fights. My expectation is a player throwing a cluster or rolling Gary directly at someone would get mowed down. This is part of the critical tactical loop we think is really sacred. Morello is explaining here that the player learning curve will eventually mean that Race will not be as strong as she is right now and that her abilities mean that you should not move predictable and be wary of them and we learn how to do so. Riot Games recently played a show match with their best developers against some of the top streamers like Shroud and in that match the top players got absolutely destroyed by the Riot employees. It's pretty rare for developers to beat the best content creators but not for the Valorant team since it consists of ex-Counter Strike pros like Volcano. This show match showed us perfectly what Morello meant. The developers have spent way more time with the game and learned how to play against certain agents. They used this at their advantage, which meant that Shroud and French couldn't simply out-aim them. 
players will learn this over time as well, and we will learn how to play and position against a race as well. A lot of people are also asking for a nerf right now, with which Morello is quite careful to do so immediately. And rightfully so, you don't want to implement a change too quick before players get to experience a new agent thoroughly. I remember this time when McCree didn't feel very strong for most Overwatch players and Blizzard decided to decrease the fall of damage for his bullets. With this fix they solved one problem but created another. Players in the lower brackets were feeling a lot stronger as McCree, since the few shots they hit did a lot more damage. But on the flip side, McCree became a better sniper than Widowmaker at that point in the higher brackets, completely ruining the experiences players were having in Grandmaster and upwards. All McCree specialists were sniping people left and right. A fix like this needs to be thought out well for all levels of play and I feel at this moment people will learn how to play against race even in the lower brackets. It's easy to say right now that Race feels overpowered, but we have to see over the course of time how people will adapt to her and then evaluate if she is indeed too strong. At this time I already feel that if you get hit by her grenades, you are already in the wrong position or not paying attention too much to your surroundings. But her ultimate still feels a bit too strong with little counterplay available. And even then, you can see on your HUD that Race has her ultimate available. Don't stack with 4 people and when you know where she is be careful of what she can do. Overwatch players are used to calling out ultimates, while Valorant players should get accustomed to that as well. So to answer the question if Raze is really overpowered, I want to say no for now. We just need to learn how to play against her and in the end we don't feel that she is that strong anymore. Her damage range on the grenades might need a small nerf though since they can even hit a flying jet and maybe a small nerf on the damage side for the grenades as well. The ultimate needs to be one shot though, else the ability will be rendered useless most of the times. Imagine using your ultimate as race, exposing yourself to the enemy and not being able to kill them at once. You will definitely die. I hope you learned something more about the difficulty of balancing an agent for everyone and if race is actually OP. If we still think she is really strong in a month, I will admit I was wrong, of course, but I do believe we will learn to play against her. I do agree though that she doesn't really fit the theme of the current set of agents and I'm curious to learn more about the agents to come if damage centered agents are a possibility. For now, I want to thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Peace.